Hello, welcome everyone uh, to the IPFS weekly core implementation sync. I am IPFS Zoom number two. I will be your host. We are going to go around uh, the room and talk about important initiatives and then less important initiatives. They're all important. And then uh, questions, answers, parking lot, that kind of thing. Uh, so without further ado, on to the high priority initiatives, uh, upcoming and ship releases. Ah, oh, someone snuck in in front of JSIPFS. Lippy to pee. Talk to me. Us, the internet, the world. Tell us. Yeah, so uh, 0.28 shipped last week on Friday. Um, we're going to put out a, an official announcement uh, today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Um, that includes peer store updates and peer store persistence. And that also includes peer info deprecation. Um, so we'll be getting getting rid of that. And that's that's mostly it, but there's more. A little bit more there uh, if you want to look at it. Uh, the ability to listen and announce certain addresses, no announce, that's all in there. Um, so take a look. Let us know if you have issues. Incredible. Very excited about that release. Everything's going to get much smaller and faster, right? That's the, it's going to be great. Um, JS IPFS shipped on Friday. So we shipped uh, version 0.46. The headline feature of that was uh, Go IPFS 0.5 compatibility. So there were um, yeah, a bunch of changes to the uh, APIs and that kind of thing. And those have all been ported across to JS IPFS and the HTTP client as well. So everything is now 100% compatible. Um, there was also a bug in uh, the PubSub implementation uh, which meant that you, under certain cond conditions, you may not be able to send messages. Uh, so you absolutely 100% want to upgrade to that as soon as possible. Um, that is it. Uh, so I want to tell us about the new RC for Go PFS. Uh, well, it's going to come out later today. It's supposed to go out earlier, first Friday. It's got a last minute bug um, where we would connect to someone, disconnect. Uh, reconnect and then forget all of the addresses and then we disconnect and try to reconnect again we wouldn't be able to do it um yeah but that is not fixed so no more bugs please no bugs only features only features yes <laughs> uh content routing he wants to tell us about the content routing initiative yeah so with the second rc coming out this week we'll just be working on testing of that um, also working on, I think Dirk was working on a quick migration script um, for supporting the config, and then just some miscellaneous DHT improvements and bug fixes. Cool. Uh, subdomain gateway, uh, Lido, are you? Yep. Uh, so, Base 36 support landed in uh, GoIPFS master, I believe. Um, and after discussing stuff with Steven last week, we decided to reevaluate re our splitting fix for supporting long CIDs on uh, uh, subdomain gateways. So namely, I've been running that for a while and there are two significant downsides, which I believe defeat the purpose of actually doing that on a subdomain gateway. So due to the fact that it's split into multiple labels, there it's impossible to get a TLS cert. So public subdomain gateways won't be able to provide that content to people and uh, by that, I mean, if someone tries to open it in regular user agent in a web browser, they will always get this uh, TLS error. So it's like subdomain gateways were created to improve security in the browser context uh, by bringing origin. So that's like one step forward. And then we take two steps back by uh, surfacing those uh, TLS errors to users. Um, and then there's a separate personal pet peeve of, of me, myself, uh, when I try to copy the CID from the URL. It's surprisingly difficult to find the dot to remove it. 
So uh, that being said, uh, to encourage the discussion, we decided to like postpone this. Uh, just to be clear, this is like this. This is not a problem with existing defaults, uh, but we may run into that problem if people try start using uh, hash functions which pro produce a longer multi hashes, and in result that will result in the longer CIDs. So uh, I closed uh, the PR which was splitting um, at uh, the the max length of DNS label. And I opened a draft to evaluate uh, a different approach when we make a different trade-offs. So details on the, uh, I linked uh, the issue there. Uh, it's actually like PR, but the, the code, it's not there yet. It's just like a template to start the discussion. But long story short, the idea is to make a different trade-off. So instead, we would prioritize having TLS on public subdomain gateways because that's effectively the default way people who don't have native IPFS support would use to access IPFS content. And like being able to access the content is more important in that context than having uh, like this specific. Uh, CID because if you are using a public HTTP gateway, you actually need to trust the gateway to send you the content. You are not actually taking advantage of uh, content addressing. You are not like verifying the payload. You delegate that trust, that work to the public gateway. So if you are not able, so, so the only purpose of subdomain gateway at that point is to give you access to the content. And that's not possible without TLS. So the idea here is to, uh, when someone tries to open a very long CID from a subdomain gateway using PATH, uh, we would take the root block and replace it with the shorter one. Uh, yes, it's effectively def defeating the purpose of longer CIDs, but in this context of someone accessing a public HTTP gateway, they don't have any security guarantees provided by IPFS anyway. And the point here would be to at least provide access to people. Uh, and I would encourage everyone interested in this on having a strong opinions to comment on the PR I link there. Is this a trade-off worth doing? Or do we simply say, on subdomain gateways, we don't support CIDs longer than 63. Uh, because I don't believe uh, at this point, splitting brings any benefit. It actually may even confuse people because the DNS would resolve and then people see TLS error. Um, so that's where we are. I'm not sure if there should be like a separate uh, design discussion we probably could bounce some ideas uh, asynchronously on that issue i just wanted to highlight that's happening here all right the meaty problem um so yeah take a look at that issue please do comment uh that is pretty important stuff uh, next on the initiative list is a bit swap updates. Uh, yeah, um, so mostly responding to a few bugs that have been reported. Uh, so one problem we were having was that sometimes the connection manager would prune a connection where we were actually that we we're actually using to transfer data. So that should no longer happen. Um, and Stephen found a bug where we were if a peer disconnected from us and then reconnected, bit swap wouldn't notice. Um, so we fixed that as well. And then finally, we've just been doing some uh, changes around the way that we measure the number of once so we can sort of track better uh, exactly what BitSwap is doing. Great. Uh, moving on to stream content-based chunking research and improvements. Yeah, um, so I, uh, for personal reasons, didn't have a, a very good week. I barely put two, uh, two days of work in. I'm still working on uh, the additional tool that uh, will let me repeat Andrew's experiment uh, 
getting Ubuntu uh, the, getting the Ubuntu mirror 1.3 terabytes uh, quickly ingested into uh, into Dagger to basically list its benefits as uh, as, as as part of the initial write up. Uh, and I'm hoping to finish that today or worst case scenario tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. No other updates at present. Cool. Uh, Mark, uh, tell us what's going on in the world of Rust IPFS. Yeah, happily. Uh, we just landed uh, CAT support from the endpoints and via the Unix FS implementation that we're doing. Um, get is next. And um, due to some substrate grant work that we're doing, we're going to get add as well. So that should sort of complete the trifecta of Unix FS stuff and the sort of like baseline endpoints that a user would do. So things are looking really good. Um, I put in the notes the cat um pr and i'm also quickly adding a link to an issue that i would like to invite all of you to um that's just sort of a brainstorming future work uh initiative there just to get some input on the directions we should we might go um we got some input from steven already uh, via email and there's stuff that we're obviously sort of chewing on and thinking about ourselves but just Feel free to come and share your thoughts. And that's all from us. Uh, a note on the ad work, uh, as I pretty much did a lot of this, like extracting pieces from uh, what GoIPFS does into a simpler form. Uh, yes. Reach out to me if you need help or pointers or whatever. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for your input already on um, the, the 174 limit thing already. Um, we're, we're looking at that too. Thank you, really. Lovely stuff. Uh, Vasco, you want to tell us about the peer store improvements? Yeah, so as Jacob said, Lupus P0.28 is shipped. Uh, it basically comes with uh, all these improvements that we were planning on doing for this first iteration. Uh, and uh, this was also already integrated in JSAPFS uh, today. And uh, it will be available for APFS users in the next release. So yeah, I think we can uh, finally close this initiative. Amazing. Talking of initiatives that can be closed, I think, uh, yeah, I think we can can close the cancelable request one as well, uh, being that the requests are cancelable. And you know, the only kind of interesting thing was taking CRDs out of the one list, and that shipped in 45. So uh, no update on the cancelable requests. Um, and I think it can come out of the notes for the next meeting. Uh, next up is JS Lib P2P Rendezvous. Yes, so uh, basically I started working on the rendezvous protocol uh, because we have experiencing some people having issues updating to the new versions of uh, IPFS and libp 2 p in the browser. Uh, this was basically a consequence of uh, the deprecation of uh, WebSocket start a while ago. And uh, so basically the goal is for us from uh, uh, since from the next, hopefully the next rules of libp 2 p to basically just use the rendezvous protocol and uh, the circuit relay and uh, after that to start uh, getting rid of the need for the star servers uh, at least in the websocket side we'll uh, need to improve upon on the webrtc first uh yeah so i got an initial uh, implementation in pr which uh, is ready for review and meanwhile i also started working on the lipid p sign peer records uh, as this will be also a requirement for the rendezvous and for the gossip sub 1.1 improvements so that we can uh, share peer records securely uh, across the network. And yeah, that's it. Awesome source. Uh, that finishes off the uh, main initiatives. Uh, so moving on to the other initiatives, uh, Unix FS v 1.5 and GoIPFS. No update there. 
Uh, migration of MozQS keys in the block store um, is the same as last week. Uh, still working on the Rupert migration tool. I'm guessing there's no nothing from Go IPFS. Uh, okay, pinning system revamp is the same. Still working on the migration tool. Had a super tedious thing with IndexedDB closing transactions when the micro task queue is empty and things that look like they should work that weren't working. But I have made some progress on that, so um, that should actually start moving, which is great. Uh, shared IPFS nodes goes on. Hey everyone. Um, I added this to the agenda. If this seems like not a, should be on the agenda, please tell me because I don't know how the uh, individual efforts get on the list. Um, so uh, I've been pursuing implementing the same origin sharing node for the browsers. Uh, I got a DAG API implemented and half of the tests are passing interface tests. Um, however, I run into certain roadblocks, one of them being how the DAG PB is implemented. Uh, I worked on implementing uh, changes to it uh, that sort of tries to bridge between where IPLD team is going in the future and where we are today. Um, it's in the PR. Uh, it's been verified that it passed all the tests that were there and all the JS IPMS tests are also seem to passing and seem to see no difference. So if we can lend those, then I will be able to make even more progress. Um, uh, yeah, this week I'll be trying to figure out all the other 50% of tests that are not passing right now. Great stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, well done, take initiative and just putting your initiative in the initiative list. That is great. Uh, that I believe is the end of the other initiatives. Um, next up is design review proposals. Anybody want to have a bike chilling discussion? As long as it's blue, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> well, I mean, you say that, but like, have you considered making it green? What if you just renamed it to the bike shed? <laughs> I mean, are you, hang on, wait, are you, are you exactly, you're deciding you don't like the name now? Okay, blockers and asks. Who is blocked? Amazing, Max. And if if for some reason somebody knows where the P two P DHT stats are collected, like where what the machine is that runs the code, so that I can look at exactly what versions of dependencies it's running, that would be cool. Uh, Nobody knows. Nobody knows, but if, no. you know, if you hear a rumor of someone who knows, send them my way because no, the nobody knows. The person who would know would be charming, and he does okay. not. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Well, doesn't doesn't Ellen help? No. Uh, no, no, no. So we have an old stats thing. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's there are many it's different crawlers. Some machine somewhere uh, in the ether. There are many in, in I'm trying to get them sort of in one place so that people can reason about them more effectively. Can we at least ping this machine? Yeah, yeah, I know it, it, it's pingable. We could probably find, you know, where okay. it's being hosted, but. We know it's network address, just not, not where it exists on the planet. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Infra team, maybe they might know. Um, Questions, who has question? Actually, if you know where what the IP address is, you can probably send that to Jeremy and you can probably ask the the machine. Uh, parking lot, base 36 by default, issue seems to have stalled. Next steps, other stakeholders. Yeah, we never went anywhere with that. Um, and now with Lidl's work, it, might become even less important. Although, yeah, no, we, we actually still need it for, I'm not yeah, sure. I, I think it's still relevant. Uh, I, I think we, I st think last time I talked with Steven, we agreed to move uh, this long CIDs uh, 
decisions uh, to uh, 0.7 and for now we are just landing uh, base 36 support uh, so there's like kind of one release overlap so it's like at least one release supported and then we can make the decision so yeah that was that was always the <clears throat> that was always the plan it's more uh that's going to be a decent amount of work if we decide to move uh you know by default to 36 uh so from that perspective yeah yeah i think it's it depends a lot of uh, our decision on long cids um we'll see i i i'd like to to, to make decision there and uh, to frame the decision around the fact uh, either we support them with TLS or we simply don't support them on subdomains and say you need to use path gateway if you want to use long hashes and that would be it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I already commented on this issue, uh, but yeah, other other views are welcome because my view is not very positive at all <laughs> no no that you're i i i i read that and it's i i totally agree that's a significant trade-off both re cost of republishing and changing the multi hash <laughs> uh, it's the price we would have to pay to have tls working on subdomains. so that's just a decision we need to make and it, unless unless there's some more like concerns with did not see. That's why I laugh more and more eyes on that before we make a decision. Uh, probably I'll make uh, maybe a, a call that like next week to give them more time for people to think about this because it's, uh, yeah, a change of approach, I'd say. So maybe a, a stupid question about subdomain things. Uh, is the like canonical representation of an IPFS URL plan to continue to be the path and then it will just redirect? Or was the plan to like have the canonical encoding be the subdomain thing? Well, the, the, if, we, you, if we are talking about IPFS URI, right? If we talk about that, then the URI is just like protocol colon slash slash CID, whatever type of CID you put because you are no longer limited by the DNS spec at that point when you have your own uh, protocol handler. Uh, so subdomains only matter when you use HTTP for interop um, because then you hit DNS and you also hit uh, public key infrastructure for certs. Uh, when we use uh, our own protocol handler, that's not an issue, and I don't believe. Uh, yes, that that does the thing. I don't want us to make a decisions or changes to the default if we, if that only impacts uh, subdomain gateways. Uh, a thing here that uh, kind of surfaced recently is that URIs, not URLs, but URIs are somewhat infected by the DNS limitation in parsers in general. So even though URIs are not DNS bound, a lot of parsers like for example, uh, Slack or you know, what, 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 whatever there is a highlighter for you know, to paste stuff and so on and so forth, how to recognize a URI, they even though they have nothing to do with DNS, they're still limited to 63 characters between dots. So that's something that we need to yeah, make a very careful trade off. Yeah. Um, I have a related question. So I understand the CIDs part here, but uh, does that somehow affect IPNS as well, where you might have a case that are unrelated to the block, in which case I think the solutions that you're proposing may not necessarily apply. You mean, like for IPNS, uh, we still got identifiers, which make which can be longer. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So uh, uh, but the encoding change would not necessarily fix that problem then. Oh, like uh, specifically for ED uh, two five five nineteen, if we encode that in base thirty six, that fits in the single label. So actually, for for IPNS, 
with inline inline keys we got a fix but if you use a longer one uh, then it no it's no longer inline it's like any other content on ipfs and it's the same situation of as with regular cids um, and then this kind of comes back to why would you use a longer hash and what kind of uh, assumptions do you make by you know what kind of guarantees does this give you and how much of these guarantees are we allowed to break kind of thing so that's the other question sounds like there's a lot to talk over on that issue um yep people are leaving because we are out of time uh, thank you very much everyone this has been the core implementations weekly sync from monday to june 2020 uh stay safe out there see you next week bye